French Revolution by Carol Bien. Louis XVI, who was the ruler at the time, was indecisive, weak, and a supporter of the old regime. The old regime had the first estate, which consisted of the clergy. The clergy was only 1% of the population, yet had many privileges, such as owning 10% of the land, as well as not paying any taxes. The second estate consisted of the nobility, who were 2% of the population, had many privileges, owned 20 to 30% of the land, and paid no taxes. The third estate consisted of everyone else, was 97% of the population, and had no privileges. The states general had the first, second, and third estate, and despite the differing populations, they all had one vote. When the first and second estate agreed, and the third estate didn't, which often happened because of the differing privileges, the first and second estate's opinions would always win. Abby Size wrote What is the Third Estate? And in the book, he wrote that the third estate is the lifeblood of the country. Louis XVI decided to block out the third estate from entering the estates general. Because they were locked out of the states general, the third estate decided to move to a nearby tennis court and declare themselves as a national assembly and swore to the tennis court oath. On July 14, 1789, the Bastille, which was a symbol of the monarchy's rule, was stormed by an angry and aggressive mob. The national assembly decided to publish the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, which were influenced heavily on Thomas Jefferson and Jacques Rousseau. The revolution escalated in the winter of 1788, when there was a large famine causing a grain shortage. It was rumored that the palace was storing grain. Angry mobs of women marched to the Palace of Versailles, known as the Women's March to Versailles, to demand bread. This is where it was famously misquoted that Mary Antoinette stated, let them eat cake. There were many responses to the French Revolution and the works published during the revolution. Olympe de Gouges, after looking at the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, decided that she should defend the rights of woman and wrote the Declaration of the Rights of Woman and of the Citizen. Edmund Burke wrote the Reflections on the Revolutions of France, where he denounced the French Revolution for being too violent. Mary Wollstonecraft decided to reply to Edmund Burke by writing the Vindication of the Rights of Man, where she defended the French Revolution. After defending the rights of man, Mary Wollstonecraft decided to defend the rights of woman by writing the vindication on the rights of woman. Thank you, Mr. Donovan, for everything this year, and thanks for watching. I'll miss you guys.